Hello, today I'm going to be walking you through how to do uh, project one. Um, for this one, we just really kind of want you to get up to speed and understand how to use all the tools, uh, but it's not going to be really testing any um, uh, programming abilities. Uh, this video I'm going to do on a Windows machine. Um, on other demos, I might use a Mac. I just want to mix it up since the class is about 50-50. So I'm going to come to projects and specifications, and I'm going to scroll down to project one. And I see this took me at a site called GitHub, which is where we're going to be posting all our projects this semester. Okay, so first off, this just says that we assume your computer is already set up with Python. I'm not going to be doing that as part of this video. Um, this is just saying that uh, for P1, we just want you to get through this, getting help from anybody. Um, there's no such thing as cheating on this project, whereas for P2 and beyond, uh, you have to make be very careful to make sure you're following our policy on academic misconduct. Okay, so first things first, we need to download some files, and we need to decide on a place to put them. In this document, we're recommending you go under Documents on your computer, and that you create a new folder called CS301 that you'll use for all this work, your work this semester. Here, you can create different subfolders. For example, you can create a P1 for project one, maybe um, for project two, you'll later have another folder called P2. Uh, you know, why not have one for our labs too? We'll, we'll have our labs in the same place. Maybe I'll have a lab one, um, so on and so forth. And ultimately, all our stuff is going to go in this P1 folder. Okay, so we want to first download some things here. So I scroll down a bit more. It says, hey, you need to install this, download this test.py. And there's some directions on how to do that. Basically, you scroll up to the top of this GitHub page, and you click on test.py, left click, the one that we want to download, test.py, and then you right click this button that says raw. So I right click on that and say save link as. So I'm going to say do save link as, and I see I'm going to go to documents and CS301 and I want to save that inside P1. So I'm going to hit save. So that's fine. Now I'm going to hit back here to go back to my um, directions. Okay, so I did the download. Now I'm on step two. Uh, we need to figure out where this P1 folder um, exists. We need to find the path for it. So if I come back here, you see I'm in P1 right now. If I click up in this blank space, I see that says C, Users, Test 2, Documents, CS301, P1. That whole thing is, is what we call the path of P1. Or maybe needing that. Um, so I could copy that there. Another way we could um, get to that is if I go up one level and I see this P1 folder. Um, if I right click on it, there's a lot of things I can do here. Um, if I hold down the Shift key while I right click on it, uh, I get some more options, including one that says Copy as Path. Um, if I do that, that's copying this location here to my keyboard, or to my clipboard. So I have that. And then what do these uh, directions tell us to do? We're going to keep that handy. Right? We've copied that. Uh, now we want to open up something called PowerShell. And say first type the Windows logo key. Uh, the Windows logo key will basically uh, perform a click down here, if I do a click here. And then it's asking us to type PowerShell. Um, don't use one of these like ISE or x86. Uh, just open a good old PowerShell right here. So the terminal window. Uh, and then what I'm supposed to type in the directions, it says CD. CD, which stands for Change Directory. A directory is a fancy name for a folder. And then I want to paste. I want to paste this right here. Okay. Uh, when I'm in PowerShell, I can paste by just right-clicking. So I'm going to right-click. And notice I have these nice uh, quotes around it. If you don't get those, make sure you type them. So I'm going to do that. You can see I'm in this new location, right? Uh, if I type ls, ls here, this stands for list files, and I hit enter, I see, okay, this is the folder or directory that I'm in. I'm in the P1 folder, and then it lists all those files I have. 
And in particular, I have that test.py, uh, which is the one that I downloaded. Right? That's the same as if I come over here, I can see test.py here, or I can also see the same test.py in this window. All right, so that's very good. All right, that means I've done everything correctly so far. Okay, so if we come up here, uh, we're doing well. Um, and then we have these directions. We have to type Jupyter Notebook and hit Enter. All right, so I'm going to type Jupyter Notebook and hit Enter, like so. We'll just have to wait a, a, a small moment here. And we see that this opens up something in, in your web browser. Uh, now, given your past experience, it probably feels like this is a, a website or that's online. But if I look at the address up here, I see it says localhost. That means this is actually running on my computer. And if I go back to this PowerShell window, I see a lot of stuff is happening here. And for this website to keep working, this web page to keep working, uh, we need to leave this PowerShell window alone. So don't close it, don't mess with it. We're just going to minimize it and leave it up the whole time. If I were to close this, I might lose my work. So I'm not going to close this until I'm done with this project. So we just minimize it. And then what the directions tell us to do is to say new uh, Python 3 notebook. So I'm going to click that. Okay, and I see I have this new notebook thing, and the name of it is Untitled. If I come back to this other tab where I just was, I see there's this file that says untitled.ipynb. That stands for I Inter Interactive Python Notebook, right? So this untitled file is here. It's also, if I come back to File Explorer, I can see that file I just created. Uh, at the end, this is what you're going to be turning in. So let's come back here and give it a better name. I'm going to click up here. And uh, for simplicity, I recommend you name this main. So I'm going to name it main and hit rename. All right, so now I have main. So if I come back to this tab, it's main.ipython notebook. If I come back to file explorer, main.ipython notebook. Great, so we're doing really well. <coughs> Let me come back to the directions for this project and see what we're supposed to do. Um, we're going to just have to copy and paste some code in our notebook. So we copy the code in this gray box here. I copy that. Oh, I'm going to copy that and come back to my notebook and paste that. And, and there's different things I could do. I could say run if I wanted to. But instead, I'm going to uh, hold down the shift key and hit enter. Shift key, hit enter. And I see that it basically is running this code and producing this output. So this thing is called a cell, and this is the output uh, for the cell. Coming back here, I see that um, they want me to type in another one too, so I'm going to copy this, paste that in the next cell, and uh, run that one. So far, so good. And then the next steps in the uh, document are telling us that we should kind of make this goofy cell like this uh, to demonstrate what we want to do when we made a mistake. Uh, let's say I want to delete this cell. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in it, and if you see right now, it's green. So let's say I type DD. Uh, those letters go in that cell because this is green. I'm in typing mode. If I hit the escape key on my keyboard, it becomes blue, which means I'm in command mode. If I hit DD again, now DD is a special command, that will delete that cell. Well, if you want to know about the different special commands, you can click on this keyboard, and you'll see lots of them here that we aren't going to talk about right now. Okay, so we're doing well. Uh, the next part of this document is about running the tests. How do I make sure that I did this project correctly? I'm going to do two things, a few things actually. Uh, first, I'm going to go to kernel, restart, and run all. And yeah, I want to restart and run the whole thing. And when I do that, it just reran all this code and everything still looks good. Uh, the next thing I might do is I might go here and say save and checkpoint. 
So that means I, I'm good. I've saved my main.i, pi, and b file. Okay, so the next steps are that we have to run this test.py program that I told you to download. And we need to do this in PowerShell again. Now I already have this PowerShell window open, but like I said, we aren't going to mess with that one. So that means I have to open up a new one. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to PowerShell again. Great. And I'm going to say CD quote. And I'm going to copy this location again, just like before. I'm going to paste that and then another quote. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say ls. And I see I, I still have my test.py file and I have my main uh, notebook file, which is good. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to run this file, test.py, to make sure that everything in my notebook looks correct. So I'm going to say python test.py and this means that we're going to run the test.py program with python. I'm going to hit enter just like that and now it's running and this means that everything looks good so far. Um, you know, unless there's some other TA deduction, I'll probably get 100% if I turn in this file. So what would I do if I want to actually turn it in? I come down here a little bit, and I see one of the first things I need to do is I need to identify who I am and who I worked with. So I'm going to copy this, and it says paste that in a new cell. So I'm going to come back here, paste that, and the submitter net ID, that's who I am. I'm submitting the code, so I need to put my net ID here. Now my email is tharder at wisc.edu, that's my campus email, which means my net ID is just tharder. Um, in this case, I didn't have a project partner, so I can just type none here. All right, this sounds good. I'm going to run this. Nothing happens. Uh, let me uh, do the kernel restart and run all one more time. That looks good, and I'm going to save it one more time. And then I'm going to come back to PowerShell. Uh, and I really recommend you do this. Even if I'm making a small change like I just did, make sure that the last thing you changed didn't break your notebook. Test it immediately before you hand it in. Okay, so we're doing very well now. And I see that now I can go to this website here, um, to, or this web page here to actually hand in my code. So I'm going to open that up. And this is already signed in. Let me let me sign out and sign back in so you can see the whole process. I'm going to say sign in with Google. And uh, I'm going to click use another account here. And I'm going to type in my whisk, whisk mail address. Say next. This is doing this weird redirect thing. And this means I have to Okay, it looks like I'm all signed in. It might, it might ask you to type in your uh, campus password, which is fine. So that was step one. We authenticated. Uh, step two is I, I want to do this for project one. Step three, I need to find that file where I did all my work. That's called main.ipythonnb. So I'm going to click open, and I'm going to submit that. So this looks good. If I scroll all the way down, I'll get some details about my submission. All of these say info, which means there's no problem. Uh, if one of these said error or warning or something like that, uh, then I would be concerned. I'd ask for help. Hey, what did I do wrong uh, with this submission? And if there is some sort of error, we're just trying to totally reject the submission uh, until you fix it. If for some reason you think we made a mistake and there's not a real problem, uh, it's kind of we are falsely detecting an error, you can always click this box. Uh, but if you click this box um, unnecessarily, uh, that could lose you participation points, right? If you didn't really follow the directions carefully and ignore the errors warning you about it. So try to turn in without that, but check it if necessary. So the last thing you might want to do is you could view your current submission just to make sure everything looks correct. And if you come here, you see that, oh, here's the cells where you wrote all your code, and this all looks good. 
and this all looks good. So this means everything is looking correct and uh, you should feel good about your submission. All right, so uh, draw ahead and uh, get a good start on it.